here from RE Technology. I've got a great topic for you guys to learn about today. Um, something uh, to me, I'm not an agent, but I am a salesperson. I, I think what Albert and his team have put together are awesome. So we're going to show you all about that today. And it's one of those things that, you know, we've been talking about a lot in a variety of different webinars through RE Technology about um, this is the time to get yourself really set so that as, as and I'm sure in your market, I've seen it in many markets, it's starting to really pick up again. You want to be in good stead um, for not only the rest of this year, but as you move forward. So uh, as the as the slide there says, we all know real estate's a numbers game. It's like any sales job, right? If you put 100 people at the top, there's a lot more that are going to fall at the bottom than if you put one person at the top, right? Just that's how it works. <laughs> you give yourself more shots at bat, you're going to get more home runs. So um, with that, I want to introduce Albert Clark. He is uh, one of the founders of Home Actions. He's been at the game of I don't know how long has it been now that you've been helping people with effective direct marketing techniques, Albert? Long time. It goes back, I think, uh, 24, 25 years now, Maryland. And thanks again for having me on the call. Um, started with e-neighborhoods, and then uh, we started getting into um, email marketing and specifically newsletter marketing uh, about 19 years ago. Uh, I launched a product called Home Log with some of my friends at e-neighborhoods, and that was the first ever electronic newsletter for real estate professionals. So throw it out about 20, at least 25 years of helping agents differentiate their service level because we know there's too many agents out there chasing too few leads. And um, the idea is let's help them focus on what's going on and that's what we call their sphere of influence. So you're a rookie, you're only out of 25 years. Yeah, that's about it. That's probably gotcha. half of my professional career. <laughs> well, awesome. half of my life. So, yeah, so let's just talk about this. I mean, you know, it's all, it all stands to reason that the more that we keep in touch, the more that we we build relationships, the more likely business is going to come our way. So tell us what that means from your perspective, Albert. Well, you know, having been around agents a lot, I ask them, always ask them one question. If I'm in a large crowd or a small crowd with them, I'll say, why can't you do the best possible job of staying in touch? Now, we all know realtors have to do three things, right? They have to prospect, they have to nurture and they have to close. Everything else around there is tangential, you know, it's something that might have to be done, but these are three critical areas. So if agents need help and they know it's not getting done, we're asking them to outsource their, you know, e-communications plan with their sphere of influence. So they say, I have a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but I don't have everything. So the process we've been working here at Home Actions diligently for the last 10 years, is to start with the first primary, you know, foundational aspect of what they can do in marketing, and that's build a database. Nine out of 10 agents, Marilyn, in today's market do not have a clean, reliable database. When you ask them where their database is, they say, oh yeah, I have one, but it's in six different places. It's in Gmail, the MLS, the cloud, uh, it's in Yahoo, it's in Top Producer, it's all over the place, but not in one place. So that's what we do is help the agents get organized. And then we put those contacts into a pipeline. We nurture them with uh, in-demand content and widgets on a continuous basis every two weeks. And then we give them intelligence on what's going on inside of their database through our use of predictive content and predictive metrics. And finally, one of our defining features, Marilyn, is email exclusivity. And what we mean by that is once an email address is put in the system under, let's say, agent A, no other agent using home actions can attack that database so consumers will see this great you know highly engaging newsletter every two weeks only from that first agent that put them in gotcha. so, so that's what we have as a as a uh, as a process uh, to get agents organized so i'd love to ask the audience just to start with that how many of you would agree and i'll raise my hand because i'm definitely on this list um don't believe that you have a well-organized centralized database it's kind of as albert described in lots of different places let me know how many of you would agree with that point i know it's my i've got about five of them in different places not the least of which are sticky notes and little notes on my uh in my text box so anyway um yeah so let's let's talk about this what does that mean so, so. what's happening is the agents have lots of contacts some they don't know because they met them at an open house two, three years ago, but they say, Al, I, some of these contacts, should I put everybody in my database? And I'm like, yes, because you don't pay per email contact with Home Actions and somebody else is gonna get that email address eventually. So 
if we can help that agent build the relationship with someone they haven't talked to in three years, and why haven't they talked to them? Because they have nothing in common. So now when they get the newsletter and they engage with our various types of content, we're creating that conversation starter for the agent, a reason to follow up with the following people, knowing what you know about them. So that's a, uh, that's a little bit different tack than what other um, you know, email marketing companies have taken out. They, um, traditionally, the agent is, and you've seen this in your past, Marilyn, they're putting mm -hmm. out chicken pot pie recipes and moving day tips, trying to build relationships. And when you ask right. them why they keep sending out that fluff, they don't have a good response. They say, well, it's there, it's free, or my broker sends it out for me. That doesn't cut it today. You have to have impactful information, engaging, it's gotta be hyper-local, and it can't be something you just throw together with a MailChimp account. Yeah, so we got a few uh, comments back. Uh, Beverly said, my, my database is kind of organized. I'd say that's probably where I'd put myself too. Jerry says, it's pretty much, but it needs sanitizing. So he may have them in there that they never right. have, we have all sorts of filters that we run through the list to clean everything up. Yeah. And then uh, Dennis says he does have a centralized database, but they're not all worth talking to, <laughs> which may be true too. Well, I can't, okay. I can't help you with that. We can get you up the home plate, but you've got to hit your home runs, David. That's right. Um, so uh, Marilyn, when we started the uh, presentation, you put up a slide there that said, you know, it's a numbers game. Well, some of these numbers aren't good. Um, and every once in a while, we see all these new surveys coming out of NAR, and they still simply, and it's been the last way for, I think, seven or eight years, hasn't budged much, 23, 24% repeat business rate. And when you ask agents why they, you know, they're leaving money on the table, many of them say, well, I just didn't stay in touch. And when you ask consumers, why didn't they use that realtor that did a great job last time? The response is always, haven't seen them in a while, sent me a happy anniversary card two years ago, we got divorced four years ago, keeps asking about the kids, we don't have any kids. Okay, those awkward moments, we try to save the agent from that. So another stat, um, about 23%, and again, 23, 24%, it's right in the middle. Uh, if, they ask, if the consumer was asked two years after a transaction who your realtor is, only 23% could come up with the, um, with the uh, name of the agent. That means 76% can't. Oh. And in the same survey, they said, Marilyn, tell me who your doctor is. Boom, they got it. Who changes the oil in your car? Boom, they got it. Who's your realtor? Uh-uh. Dead silence. Wow. And that's a, a couple of them get it, but it's not top of mind. And you know that's what we're trying to build here. For sure. Yeah. So on this example here, um, Marilyn, the, uh, on the left-hand side, you'll see a graphic. Um, that's the top part of the newsletter. We customize all the graphics at the top of the newsletter. Um, our Photoshop experts jump on these things and we'll build something custom for the agent. And then every two weeks, there's eight or nine articles that get automatically inserted in the newsletter. The agent can then take some articles out, can reword them, uh, let them in, whatever. But this is, where, uh, this is where the departure takes over now. We don't talk about hot leads around here. We talk about conversation starters. So we use the newsletter to get into the home of right now a couple, you know, several million consumers every two weeks, and we deliver this engaging content on behalf of the agent. So we portray the agent as an expert, somebody that's watching out, you know, an advocate, watching out for that home, because there's things that are going on in that home that we might be able to help them with. And the consumer will remember that down the road when it comes time to choose that realtor again. So again, that's our content philosophy, is making sure that it's hyper-local, and consistently delivered. And it's, um, if, if, I, if you go back to that one for a sec, it looks like, a, um, and th this is something I hear a lot. So some agents are very specific and want to, um, they may even want to put their own articles in if they like to write, which a lot of us do or don't, right? But there's, but then a lot of people just want you to do all the work where you just say, you know, I'll set up the template, put my name on and away it goes. I don't have to touch it. Is that possible where I don't have to do anything? You just curate yeah, we, it for we me? Call that, we call that set it and forget it. About half of our agents just want somebody to make them look good every two weeks, but they okay. don't want to get involved. Involved meaning, hey, home actions, put in my listing, my just solds, my open houses, my testimonials. Um, I've got some new videos that I shot. Put Bring in my YouTube channel. We could bring all that content in. There's never a charge for extra you know, content that we're gonna add for you. And we know that ends up making a better impression with the consumers because the consumers can see through fluff. But when you do authentic communications into the home, 
that, you know, and this is all about home ownership. Please don't consider us a real estate newsletter. We're just home ownership 101. And that's why our content focuses on home and everything that goes on around the home. So yes, this is could be set it and forget it, but the, we get more value. We see more value for the agent and more open rates, obviously, when they get working with us every two weeks and bring in some personal content. Well, I love that that you call it a um, or you know a, a home ownership as opposed to this is not lead gen, even though it it does nurture leads. What it really is is like you say, building a relationship and I think sharing credibility too, don't you think? I mean, if it's about what's going on in the local marketplace or um, shows empathy about. I'm, I'm sure you've got COVID content right now. Um, you know, yeah, that, we've got COVID. That yeah, it's, it's, it's since day different. one. It's not like it's like some people. I feel like they throw content at you and just hope for the best. And what it right. seems like you're you're targeting content that makes sense for our relationship at whatever level that that relationship's at. That makes sense. Yeah, and this is a, a perfect example on the right side here. Um, this is what we call trigger content or predictive content. Um, what we know is that people read articles after they read a summary, they read the full article when they're interested in that topic. So what we'll do is we'll ask agents, wouldn't you want to talk to 20 people who are trying to find down payment money now? Well, yeah, I would. Well, we're, as soon as these articles that opened, we wrote these for a reason. And we, the reason is when somebody opens it up, we send a signal by text or email to the agent and let them know that Betty Jane Wilson just clicked on this article. So that's a pretty cool conversation starter, right? For a phone call or an email. Hey, Betty Jane, we've got, you know, I know there's a lot of state programs out there, first time home buyer things. Start the conversation knowing that that's the conversation they wanna be in. So right. true or false, and we always try to dispel myths. Right now, most consumers think that they need 20% in perfect credit, right? To get into their first home. But we all know you can get people in the programs for, you know, 5% and, you know, not perfect credit. Um, so that's what we do is we engage the consumer, we put content out there, when it gets open, clicked and engaged, the, the agent finds out about that and then they're able to follow up with that conversation starter. And that's, that's where we differentiate is in the predictive content and the metrics that support that content. So now, we, have a, we have a question for you, Albert. Um, go ahead. Ron, actually too, Roni wants to know if an agent has a website or a blog, can he possibly upload, can you upload the contents to his or her website or blog in addition to the newsletter? Yes, the newsletter has its own URL. Every two weeks you have a new newsletter and it's a permanent URL. You can sh okay. share that on social media, on your blog, on your website. Each okay. article, we have a solution for uh, sharing each article, which takes about six or seven seconds after you open up the article. You push the button and it goes right to Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn automatically. So yes, any of our content can be used in multiple locations, multiple venues, you just have to show, you know, tell us what you want and we'll tell you how to get it done. I know one other question from Evelyn. Um, you talked a little bit earlier about exclusivity. She said, right. so if, if more than one agent has an email address of someone, it goes to the first agent that enters that email address? Is that is that how it works? Yeah, that's what we call the first mover advantage. Uh, agents that see our presentation, you know, will literally sometimes be filling out the order form during the presentation because they know they have 15, 1800, 2000 contacts in their various sources and they wanna get them in and locked up. And when we say locked up, once the email address gets put in by that system, no other agent in that office or the country can attack that same email address. So awesome. we're, locking in this, we're locking in that relationship to make sure that your clients, prospects and friends never see this from another agent down the street or across the country. So it behooves you, you need to make the database bigger because then you're locking out more and more of your competition locally, right? Yes, we have agents with eight, nine, 10,000 email addresses. They've been collecting email addresses since they've been making email addresses. <laughs> and now imagine getting a 45, 48% open rate on seven or 8,000 newsletters that are going out every two weeks. That that uh, return on investments on, you know, uh, priceless, I, I would say. Yeah, um, I mean, so, most, Open rates, just for the audience, if, if you don't aren't familiar with that number, on a good, really good day, normally it can be 15 to 20 percent, and so you're getting what two and almost two and a half times that, which is amazing. Yeah, yeah and some of our agents, Marilyn, they say, you know, why doesn't everybody open this stuff? This is great stuff, and that's just not the nature of email marketing. I mean, no one's got a a 100 percent uh, open rate. No one's got a 100 percent of their people that know who they are. 
So some of these email addresses just aren't, some of these email holders just aren't opening up the newsletter because they don't know the agent or, you know, and we do all sorts of, uh, all sorts of scanning and scrubbing these lists before they go into the system. We pay an outside service to verify every email address that we put in the system. And that's why we, because we appreciate our whitelisted uh, capability uh, with all the ISPs. So when we send a quarter of a million emails to Gmail, they know who we are. Okay, it makes it a lot easier. Well, and then your deliverable rate, in other words, the, if you put 100 out, mostly close to 100 are going to actually get into somebody's inbox with that, right? Oh, yeah, your name, well, first off, your name will be in front of that many people, right? So at least you're getting an impression there. And then when you get them opened, and one of the screens I'll show you a little while now, Marilyn, is a, and the rest of the crowd, is a, um, a, one of our reports after the newsletter launches as to actually how many people opened it multiple times. We'll be able to explain that in a few minutes. Great. Okay. So, uh, do you have any more questions, or are we going to go to this next one? No, I think we're good right now. Oh, okay. So, what you're seeing on the left-hand side now, if there's only one thing you could learn from this conversation today, it's that everybody wants to know what the house down the street sold for. So, for agents that have RPR, um, we were able to enable these RPR reports and put them right on the newsletter for the agent. And when the consumer clicks on their zip code, up will come everything that's sold from last night going back three months because consumers want to know what's sold down the street. This is a very predictive article, and studies show that 40% of consumers that click on that kind of content are engaging maybe in a little warm up, um, you know, early stage research for a buy or sell opportunity, haven't called the realtor yet, they're investigating neighborhoods. In fact, what we're trying to do now, Marilyn, is get consumers to do all their research in front of the agent not behind the agent's back on Zillow. So if I'm trying to, you know, if I'm looking at all these interactive and hyper-local widgets, the agent knows who's engaging with those widgets, right? So we, we can see what the consumer is getting when they're looking for what's sold down the street, how's my home equity doing, uh, what's my house worth? All those kinds of predictive articles that we have in the system, they send a signal back to the agent. So the agent knows what's going on, and they could see the progression of them doing their research. So it's a great, again, conversation starter. Hey, Jim, haven't talked to you in a couple of months since we were looking at those other houses. What's going on these days? And then we want the agent to just step back and let the consumer just spill the beans as to what's going on in their life. So again, your content has to be hyper-local if you're gonna engage consumers with this sort of uh, relationship building. And that we're, we're, we're very good at. That's what we're good at is predictive content and then showing you the metrics as to who engaged what. Yeah, Here's that's, one, that's, uh, that's the Marilyn. secret this to is, me, uh, is that you tell me that, so if you, you you would, if I like you say, if there's somebody that's just looking at a down payment versus someone that wants to know how much their house sold, you clearly would call them or contact them or text them or wherever you do it in a different way, right? That That gives you a leg up into what they're thinking about. That's so hard to get unless you actually talk to them. So that's amazing. Right. And talking is now easier because you know what they just looked at. So you wouldn't say, hey, Jim, I see you opened my newsletter 38 seconds ago and clicked on that article, but you could, right? Okay. Because we're doing live lifetime uh, reporting on all these articles. Gotcha, okay. Okay, on this next slide, here's just another article that we fit in every couple of uh, launches. Seven out of 10 homeowning families have no idea how much equity they have in their home. They know it's good, but they don't know how much it is. And studies show they're not going to put their house on the market until somebody gives them that magic number. And again, we don't want it to be Zillow behind your back. We want them researching in front of you. So here's a great ability for the agent to fire back an email or a phone call and say, hey, Ellen, let's do a quick CMA for you. And we'll, we'll get you those numbers, right? Because she just read that article. Now, if you weren't interested in home equity or not a homeowner, you might not click that article. But when right. you do, that sends a powerful signal back to the agent. Ready for engagement, let's go. So Sam's asking a really, a, a bigger question. Um, I, I think an important one, because if, if we talk about every agent only has so many dollars to go around, right? Where, do, where should they spend their money? He's asking, is social media more effective or is email marketing more effective? Uh, I'm a little tainted. Um, I see a lot <laughs> of agents putting stuff up on Facebook and they think just because they're putting it up that they're getting the engagement. But I, um, I, I don't think there's anything out there like email addresses in the email system for guaranteeing that your message will get through the way that it looks right now. 
meaning some agents are putting up content on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. You know, there's typos on there. There's they have images that don't render well. So I don't think it's the end all and be all. I don't think it ever will be. It's a great place to start. And by the way, we can put your newsletter on your Facebook page. We could put your home action sign up page, right? Here's why you want to sign up for my home actions on your Facebook. Okay, every article you could share. There's an unlimited, there's a library that we're going to show you in a couple of minutes with 1,200 articles in it. And we're going to be able to show the agent how easy it is to share these good homeownership themed articles. And um, so that's what we're thinking is agents that may be sitting around these days waiting for the storm to clear, they should be firing off all sorts of requests to their sphere saying, hey, let's see if we can get you, you know, some, some realistic numbers on what your house is worth. And, and the Sam, consumers would appreciate to... that because they just read that article. I wanted to share something too with you, Sam. I don't know what type of social media. Of course, that's a very generic term, right? There's a lot of things you can do. But one thing important to know that's changed relatively recently, um, real estate is now, I think they call it a special category on Facebook advertising. And basically what that means is your ability to target is much, much, much less uh, available than it used to be. So now you can't target by uh, home ownership, you can't target by a particular demographic, um, and you can't get, I believe it's any more than 50, 15 miles or 50, I forget, I, I have to look that up, but a certain amount of radius around the area that you're looking for. So in other words, your targeting abilities are much, much weaker on Facebook than they used to be, whereas this is an actual email address right you know you know exactly who it's going to and ideally it's someone that you've had some contact with right it doesn't mean that they're your best friend but right they've met them in an open house or they, there's some connection that you have whereas that kind of social media advertising is kind of much more um anonymous a little bit and there's other types of advertising on social media too where you can actually buy email addresses it's more expensive but i, I think you're right i, I this is me talking, I'm biased because I'm, I love Albert and I love what they do, but I think the idea of having email marketing that can be used on social media, so you can use it kind of in both places, It's you can't really use social media advertising in email, but you can use email on social media. So if it were me, I would try to give myself as many shots as possible, um, just because that it you never know where you might find them, right? But this thing, knowing that these are people you've already connected with, is probably a better shot than those. I don't know if any of you have ever um, taken any ninja training. If you have, um, that's a, a great training organization. And they talk all about don't go after cold people you've never met before. Nurture the people that you already know at some level. And that's exactly what, what this program does for you. In Maryland, I'm going down to um, South or North Carolina in a couple of weeks for a, um, well, I think it's about two months now, uh, ninja training with Cobalt Banker Advantage. And Good. what the ninja really teaches all these agents is build it first off, one of the major tenants is make sure that everybody, you know, is getting consistently emailed. But secondly, start building your professional uh, team, your roofers, your plumbers, your contractors. So inside the agent's newsletter, we can build their Angie's list and we could refer out and start promoting their loan officer, the insurance agent they know, Wherever, there is, wherever they are with these relationships with their professionals, bring them in and create a whole you know, subset of material that consumers can actually benefit from if they have a question about electricity or their air conditioner, whatever. Um, oh, so great. it's very easy inside the, um, the newsletter system to build that database of local professional contacts that you have. That's great. Um, Lev asks, is it, okay, is it also possible to post your content to Instagram? Uh, yes, um, we could, you could take, I don't think we have our Instagram button fully functioning right now, but the ability for you to short code all of this information is certainly there. So yes, you can cut and paste it into uh, Instagram. And, and, and uh, Dennis the agreed with was, um, the, the, uh, desire of homeowner of the realtors to always be posting fresh and engaging content. And this is just some of what you're seeing here. This is our real, this is a, we're a company that has a fire in the belly for good content. And if you don't have good content, you don't have a business model these days because fluff isn't gonna work. So we have 1200 articles here. We're constantly adding articles to it, updating them and making sure that the agent has access to the best information on home ownership and real estate. So here, as, as you can see, all these articles, there's, there's many more that you can't see uh, on all aspects of home ownership. So you're, the agent is free to use any of this content on their blog, social media, put it on their website, whatever.
That's awesome. Yeah, it looks like, like you say, it's meaty, like about finance and um, repairs and renovations and what you do with the kitchen. You know, I think a lot of people, I know myself, when you have, when you own a home for a long time, you get a, I feel like you're a little out of touch about if you were going to prepare your home for sale, what should you do? Because you've fallen in love with whatever features you have, but you don't know what anybody else would buy. So this kind of stuff is really helpful. That's true. We all, we always publish surveys on what's new in, you know, creating curb appeal and uh, making that uh, making that effort to sell your home, either yourself, but hopefully with the agent. So, yeah, so this is um, this is an example of that fire in the belly we have um, to produce good hyper local content and enable it and make sure it gets out there. Right. Because content is no good unless it gets engaged. Well, Sam asked a question. Is there a limit on how many or the number of email addresses that can be sent? Uh, no, uh, but don't, you know, don't throw us a list of 20,000 because we know you bought that. We don't allow purchase lists in our system and we have filters that will take out, you know, and actually um, be able to point out who is breaking that code. Um, but anytime you were buying email addresses, half of them are junk anyway, you're going to get ripped off. It's, it, you know, we've seen it over the years. We've seen agents try to, you know, put in 30, 40, 50,000 email addresses in our system. And we just don't allow that because no one's got a sphere of influence that size. But certainly, we're not afraid of six, seven, eight, nine thousand email addresses going out every two weeks. Um, gotcha. Bruno asked the question: Is the newsletter readable on the cell phone? Oh yes, and with the reason that you'll notice that our newsletters are very thin because these days, 64% of all emails are getting opened up on mobile devices. So your device, your your, and we have what we call this reflexive, uh, responsive modeling, where when somebody's going to open up the newsletter. We know they're, if they're on an iPhone or a 56 inch screen or a 12 inch tablet, and we send it that way so it looks the best. These things, these newsletters look cool, easily readable on an iPhone. And right. that's why this technology that we all built inside the house, we didn't go outside for any of this technology, we built everything. And um, so we have the, um, we, ha we know what kind of device is being opened on. So yes, it's, it's a little thin, uh, but when it blows up on a, a tablet or an iPhone, you really you really appreciate it. Gotcha. Okay. So uh, Teams can use this as well? Yeah. There is no extra charge for Teams, even though we have extra work on our side to go in to their Gmail, to their MLS, to their iCloud, to their Hotmail. We'll just do it multiple times. And a lot of agents expect to get, and I wouldn't say ripped off, but certainly have, you know, um, the, the cost of the program, the double, triple, quadruple based on head. But no, we'll build it and we will, you know, sort of work with you to make sure that all these agents get all their sphere into one consistent database. I believe this, um, this uh, Diane and Dino with uh, Howard Hanna, along with their three members, have about 11,000 email addresses going out every two weeks. And when the leads come back in, they know whose lead it is. So it works pretty well with Teams. Great. So uh, on this screen, Marilyn, the, uh, what does it take to become an advocate? This is where we were mentioning our content philosophy here. It has to be about the home, the pocketbook, and things that go into the home. So our editors have their pulse on what's going on in all these topics. And of course, I don't think you consider this real estate. Again, home ownership, that's what we do. We focus on the things that happen around the home. So these are topics that, you know, frankly, you and I, Marilyn, need to be up on. We just don't have the time to track all this, all right? So in the real world, your realtor is the one that's being that advocate, making sure that the consumer is up to date on all these things. Well, this is good too. Even if I'm a like, if I'm a renter and I haven't quite bought yet, a lot of these things are still relevant for them, right? It, sure, yeah. The first time, you know, consumer news. You know, uh, what a month ago, what a, one of our uh, highly trending articles was the. Um, do you recall the IKEA dressers that were tipping over and killing children? Yeah. Well, after IKEA paid over $100 million in fines, there's still these um, uh, dressers that are out there in America that kids are opening the bottom. In order to reach the toy at the top, they pull out the drawer at the bottom and they use it as a ladder. And the dresser tips over, and I think 12 or 13 children have been killed, needlessly. Yeah. And, you know, we every couple of years, there's another, you know, blood flare up of these accidents. And we're, you know, constantly getting alerts from the Federal Trade Commission, the Consumer Product Safety Commission. We track all that stuff. And when it's important, we push it out. Gotcha. Yeah, that, that's so much more meaningful. That's like you say, it's just meatier. I guess that's the way I would describe it. 
it's not it's not fluffy and then market analysis and home values all of that stuff that's that's really what i think a lot of consumers want to hear about i would guess right yeah what, what's in it for me is the common theme that we hear right and um uh, and that's pretty good and then you know the, the really fun part about this is after the agent's newsletter launches for the first few launches we'll actually call the agent back and we'll say hey did you click here did you click there did you click there look at what's going on here so this gets into our what we call predictive metrics the ability for you the agent to sit back and say where should i focus my interest now who's you know who's at the top of the list here so on this screen you could see where we sent all these newsletters to the agent and on the left hand side going down the bottom there you'll see unique opens that means somebody opened it at least once but the number to the right of that let me see if i can get that up so i can even see it yeah 1016 total opens that's gonna what i'm going to tell you is that half of your readers of your newsletter will open it multiple times because they can't read it all at one city and what we found out is through and of course all your metrics if you keep digging and digging and clicking you'll see who opens your newsletter at four o'clock in the morning well why are they doing that i don't know but we know they did it so again the idea is putting content out there letting them engage with it on their terms when they want to and you know we're sending a lot of our newsletters go out 5 30 6 30 in the morning and what we're finding out is you know when you, Marilyn, when your alarm clock goes off every day what do you do you grab your phone right you want to see if life went on without you the last six hours and usually does but what we're after now is the consumers are throwing out their junk that's evident and saving what they want to read later on and we know when they open this three four five seven times and of course you know it too because you're going to see all the metrics uh the I next mean, slide that is so uh, that's i just have to underline that again that is so rare for marketing content you know this isn't really marketing content it is but it's really relationship content it, Clearly, they're finding value if they're opening it more than once. I mean, if you just think about your own behavior, you go through your email and it's like click, 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 delete, 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 right? They're not only are they stopping on it, but they're coming back to it again and again. And every time they're doing that, your brand is standing right there. Right. So they're remembering it's you plus whatever the great content is. So that that's really that's really it's really difficult to do that. As someone that does a lot of marketing, I can tell you that's not easy. It's what we call transparency, right? We're not we can't fool you. Numbers don't lie uh on this screen on uh, this next one um there we go here's a synopsis of what home actions put in my newsletter and how many times people opened it and of course who you'll see that little word who there to the right of all the numbers and they as soon as you click on who up will come those 26 people that want to mm -hmm. see the core logic monthly home price index 28 wanted to know their perfect example marilyn 40 percent of those 28 which is what 10 11 people obviously are engaging in research because they're asking for that kind of information they want it they, they think their house is more valuable than what's sold down the street so again click the word who jump on the phone fire off some emails knowing what you know about your readers so again this is the, some of the reports that we help you pull up and we want you to understand this and after two or three newsletters the agent is usually on their own they're doing all this research they're finding out where they should uh, focus their efforts on and it works for them so it, you know what we're saying is if it works if it works for you it should work for a lot of other agents and we know that that's at the end of the day that's what we do so and then um, we um, have bruno what, had a question for you um I, I think i understand bruno if i'm not stating it properly you know you can come back in he said how can i am actions assure that my email will not end up with my competitor or with Zillow. So how, how do you protect their databases once they, they give them to you as part of the system? Well, what we promised the agent is that none of their readers, prospects, or friends, whatever, clients, will get another newsletter from uh, another agent anywhere in the country. If that consumer goes and does some research on Germ and, and uh, Zillow, we can't stop that. We don't know what Zillow is giving them, and you know, frankly, it's either you know grossly inadequate or wrong day of the week. But anyway, the idea is that I can't stop an email address from being used. I just want to make sure that no one's going to be able to deliver that kind of amazing value that we have every two weeks to their inbox. And I, of course, you're not doing anything else with their data once that you have it. That's you're not. It's a it's a box. It's not going anywhere else. You're not sharing no, it with anybody. Our privacy policy was turned upside down by Howard Hanna. We've got about 500 Howard Hanna agents using our program. 
uh, probably a thousand Cobalt Banker throughout the whole system. We've been vetted quite closely. You know, some of the deals and relationships we have wouldn't be there if we were selling email addresses. And frankly, right. the value of an email address today on the open market is minimal, nothing. I mean, you could sell, you know, your whole database for a buck and a half. I mean, that's not something we ever even thought about doing. So the yeah. email, the, the in fact, the list is, and our terms of service imply this, and in fact, in short, um, when we when you help us when we build your database and put it in our system, if you cancel the program, you get your database back. You own the database. We don't. We just get the amazing ability to nurture it for you. Okay. Perfect. So it's always yours. And you know, a lot of agents are asking, what if I'm thinking about leaving my brokerage? What happens to my newsletter? Well, we just swap it out with new graphics. It's yours. You take it with you. This is your Perfect. investment in your pipeline down the road, right? Because your, your your nurtured pipeline is your biggest professional asset you have. It's not your Range Rover, it's not the Cadillac, it's your pipeline. Gotcha. That's what we're and seeing. Yeah. So, in fact, we're the first ones that get called when an agent does jump from one office to another, right? Because they they don't want their newsletter going out with the incorrect graphics on it. Um, so, we hear from them and there's, you know, agents tend to jump from ship to ship and uh, we'll be there with them. They take this with them. So Sam wants to know if, um, what if I only have email addresses and not a first name? Is Can I still use the system? Yeah, uh, we, in fact, that's all we require to add a new member is an email address. If we have the first name, please put it in when you're enrolling the pre person or putting it on the spreadsheet because we have a salutation uh, spot at the top of the newsletter where we'll say, hello, Marilyn, here are your home actions for July 4th. Uh, if you have that uh, first name, salutation works a lot better. If not, it'll just say, hello, here are your home actions for. So we can help you write some, you know, context around that if we if we can um, if we can muster the first name of the consumer. Gotcha. But, you, know, yeah. a, you know, a lot of them, you know, a lot of the consumers, you're frankly don't have your names at all. You're right. You just got an email address from a web form or something like that. So, yes, the system still works quite well, even if you don't have a um, the first name of the consumer. Perfect. And Aaron is asking, if contents are shared, does it still link to my site into my info? I'm sorry, say it again, Marilyn? If contents are shared, and Aaron, we may need you to clarify a little bit, does it still link to my site and my info? I, 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 do you mean, Aaron, yes. that the, the article is used by more than one person? Yeah, when the articles go out or sh shared on social media or blogs, all the agent branding is on there. Okay, so no one's going to be able to steal your content. Yes, they can highlight and cut and paste it and scrub, you know, rip it off if they wanted to. Um, but every time that you share your URL or you share an article that was found in the newsletter system or in our library, it will um, it will have your branding already built into it. And one other question: You get lots of questions, Albert. Um, Love wants to know: Can we sync our database from our CRM to your system? Well, right now the only database that we have live syncing with is Moxie Engage. Um, but we're looking at the other big ones out there, you know, KV Core, Sync. There's probably five or six other ones. Uh, and we're in early stage negotiations with them to see if we can get this integration because there's nothing better than an integrated database between your CRM, which we're not, and e-relationship platform, which we are. Right. Okay. So okay. right now in the in the Howard Hand environment, the, the Howard Hand agents can turn a switch on and all their contacts and their engaged CRM every morning at 2.30 will go into Home Actions, and Home Actions puts them all back, you know, the new ones there uh, go into the Moxie Engage system. So that's uh, that's certainly on our whiteboard for, for the rest of this year. Lev, um, just out of curiosity, what CRM are you using? We can let Albert know. He should get that one next. <laughs> People now we could also, Marilyn, we could also export out of any CRM system, right? They all let you export the contacts. So we'll okay. go back into there every couple of weeks or every month if the agent wants and bring them all in manually. We'll do that for them, no charge, because we want them to have the largest protected database in their home action system. Gotcha. So we work, we literally, we work with any CRM out there. Only the one Moxie Engage is actually integrated, um, but we could certainly get the agent's contacts out of any of their systems. Gotcha. So Lev uses KW Command if you want to put that one on your list. That's a big right. We, yeah, we can export in seconds out of KW Command and right into Home Actions. Gotcha. Okay, good. Um, okay, so let's let's talk about this. I think this is really interesting too. So you're you're not only 
judging what you believe is good content based on how many people click on it, but you're also asking their opinion too, right? Right, and we see this in the agencies, this, you know, this research, these are feedback forms. And this is a great way to ask for referral business. Look at that number number four down there, the fourth question. Okay, a lot of times when these forms come back to the agent, that box is checked yes. And that means somebody that gets the newsletter, they don't need real estate services, but their sister-in-law is coming to town. And they're gladly refer you. Why? Because you're helping them right now with their American dream. Every two weeks, you're in front of them with helpful content. They're willing to give a little bit back. They know what the deal is here. They know why they're getting this newsletter, right? The drum up business for the realtor. So let's make it, you know, as authentic as we can. Um, so again, when you get emails from home actions, they're usually pretty good. The only bad email you're gonna get is when somebody unsubscribes. And we have one of the lowest unsubscribe rates in literally, I think that I've been doing research for the last couple of years, um, because this cons the consumers just enjoy this comment, or, or I'm sorry, enjoy, enjoy the content and we mm -hmm. ask them, we do some polling and you know, we're happy with them. They like it every two weeks because it's brand new stuff. It's not once a month. That's great. Okay. So um, that's, you know, and it's great to get good feedback because some consumers think the agent actually writes all this stuff. And that's when we really say, boy, we did a good job writing this because we don't make it look like it's, you know, too high a level. We make it look like it's coming right at the agent. Um, in between the newsletters, and one of the questions I'm sure is going to be eventually, if these newsletters go out every two weeks, how do I send something to my database in between those two newsletters? Well, we have a system called um, in, on Target that allows you to send anything, a listing flyer or an urgent you know, open house this weekend that you have, testimonials, whatever. We'll build a flyer. You know, We call it an e-blast. We'll build it send you a proof, you say it's okay, you push a button, it's on the street right now. So we're building some, some technology in here now to be able to push out new listing flyers in about two hours after you get the listing. That's great. I want to tell everybody that you're gonna get this listing promoted to your sphere of influence immediately. That's awesome, okay. Any other questions uh, in, the, in the queue? No, we can keep going. I think we're doing good right now. Let's let's keep okay. going. So this is a good um, one. I love, love this this slide. Right now, Marilyn, I showed you the other day where uh, Zillow was taking out ads in Arizona and Nevada, saying simply, "You don't need realtors anymore. We have everything they need. You don't need loan officers. We've got our own mortgage company." Everybody remembers when Zillow said, "Oh, we're not going to be getting into real estate, and we're not going to be getting into mortgages." Well, they bought five or six mortgage companies, cut them a break, right? Well, they think that Asians charge too much and they want to cut out that, that segment of the, uh, of the expense chart um, and have everybody go to Zillow. Well, we don't think that's a good model and I think everybody on the call would agree that it's not a good model. So what we did was we built this widget called the Neighborhood 360. And the Neighborhood 360 is a widget, which is a computer program that sits right on the newsletter and it allows you to investigate what's going on in 150 million street addresses. That's every email, every street address, I'm sorry, not email, I'm so in, engrossed with emails, uh, physical street addresses. Type in any address of 150 million, and what is gonna come up is a really cool, uh, what we call a deep data dive into that home and everything that's around that home. So as soon as this article gets opened and somebody fills it out and requests information, the agent gets a text or an email and can simply say, wow, Ellen, who's looking at my house, my listing, 59 Hemlock Woods, and you wonder why she's doing it. Well, I don't know why she's doing it until we get to the last part here where she has to tell the system why she wants this report. And many times it's my house, and I'm thinking about selling it. I'm thinking about buying it as an investment. Okay, where do you see this cool content that's gonna come back to the agent? But anyway, let's quickly go through this report. So this is a report that works on any address anywhere in the country. There aren't any more than 150 million. We're gonna talk about the home, how many floor, floors, square footage, et cetera, recent sales nearby. Remember I told you everybody wanted to know what sold down the street? This is it. Then we get into rent versus own, average tax information, average residential tax bill in the area, cost of living, and there's all sorts of calculators here. So if you're moving from Syracuse to uh, this part of New York State, we know how, if you're going to save some money because thing, we know what things cost everywhere in the country. They're, these calculators are amazing. Uh, so then what happens next is um, on this next slide, we're going to pull up all the schools. 
right? And we're not going to tell the consumer what school their kids are going to go to. We just tell them where the schools are. And they can click on any of these blue buttons and get some information about the school. And then we get into this amenity section, right? And what you'll see is, and many of you agents know this, is that consumers are now researching neighborhoods before they even look at houses in that neighborhood. They want something that matches up with their lifestyle. So here we know where we can go for happy hour and dine every Friday night. Uh, again, this is, this is pre-corona, right? Before these places were closed. Um, but the idea is with all within three miles of that listing, we know where the stores are, the new stores, okay? The established stores. We know where you, the, the uh, consumer can go for animal services, right? The Petco stores. We know where dog walkers are. We have all the veterinarian hospitals. We know what's going on if you're a pet lover. Now, many agents on the call may not like pets, but you can't say that because 50% of your clients have pets. So you're showing just an unrelenting concern for the animals and you're looking, you're really separating yourself here. And then after that one is places to work out, right? I wanna know if there's gymnasiums within three or four miles of this neighborhood or of this house. So again, you're finding out all this consumer information on what they're clicking on. And then here's another one, where are we gonna get our tattoos removed, toenails done, hair done? You'll notice it's all within three miles of that house that they're investigating. This is a very, very you know, uh, c consistent report. We call it very predictive because you don't dig this deep into a house or a neighborhood unless you're interested in what's going on possibly with a buy or sell transaction. Okay, so again, oodles of information, all hyper-local obviously, within three miles of that house. And if it's their house, they recognize all these stores and places. And then we top off the 360 widget with the uh, neighborhood navigator, tell me what my house is worth. Now, Marilyn, on many of the uh, largest websites throughout the country that provide an uh, agent a website, they have this, you know, what's my home's value button. But if the agent's getting three and a half visits per month, nobody's hitting on that button. We're going to put that same functionality, or much more accurate functionality, uh, into the system with this widget that's an article in every newsletter. It's simply tell me what my house is worth. Okay, so we come back and we give them a value range. And they have to fill out that form on the right, as well as the other um, widget I was telling you about, the Neighborhood 360. Fill out this form. Boom, it goes back to the agent. The agent can call up Jimmy and say, hey, Jim, I think your house is worth about 704. I did a quick analysis. Okay. And you can't get a better lead than this. Again, we don't call them hot leads. This is a great conversation starter, right? Because if you can't yeah, get you know, if you know why they're asking, that's that's you're halfway home, right? If you know halfway it's home, home, right? Why are they interested in doing that? I thought you know they were settling down now that the kids are all out of school. I don't know what the reason is, but you're going to be able to find out with this conversation starter. So a question I get, Marilyn, all the time is, "Hey Al, how many like any other marketing product? They want to know what the return on investment is, mm -hmm. and they'll say, Al, how many houses am I going to sell this year if I buy home actions?" And I'll give them the Zillow response between zero and a hundred. I have no idea. We don't guarantee that. Now, our goal is to have you do at least two homes more per year because you're using our system, two more than you would have done normally. Okay. And that certainly gets your return on investment back. Um, so there's multiple ways that you can assess your return on investment with home actions because we're doing all these things behind the scenes. Okay. And we're getting you out there in front of people every two weeks. Because if you're not around people that can put money in your pocket, you're not going to get money put in your pocket, right? That's where all the numbers game goes back to that first slide. So we got to do all these things for you to so you can see that return on investment, okay? Intelligence on your sphere, creating social credibility, right? Good content. And so it's street cred is what we're all after when it comes to social media, right? Mm -hmm. So again, we wrapped all this up into a package called Home Actions. And then we want you to consider this your you know, your tool as to how you're gonna build relationship capital. So Marilyn, remember before when somebody said, um, you know, where, where our forte was what, what kind of content? Well, engaging content and it sums up as we know what to send, we know when to send it, how to send it. Remember, it's gotta be very thin because it's mm -hmm. gotta look good on the iPhones. And we know how to lock in exclusive value and create these conversation starters for you. Right, because that's what agents need these days. They're great salespeople, but they got to crack the ice. They got to get the phone call opened or the email opened, and that's what we help them with. 
Yeah, that's that's so so valuable because to be able to do that for even 200 people, but if you've got 2,000 or 4,000 or even more, there's just no way to do that. And I, what I love about this is exactly what you were talking about earlier of that sort of prediction predictive content concept is I really don't know. I'm kind of spraying. If I've got a thousand people, I really don't know where they are. But if I start talking to them every two weeks and something catches their eye, I'm sure agents get responses back and say, oh, thanks for sending this or, oh, how are you doing? Right. It creates a, a conversation beyond this conversation, too, I would guess. Right. That right. They, it creates a dialogue that and if nothing else, like you say, that you just stay in there you stay in their sites so they won't forget your name like those 76 percent do right now that's well that's they, won't, they didn't forget the agent they just can't come up with his name quickly yeah but that's <laughs> that. important just, forgetting right you want them to be able to go oh here i've got their cell phone let me give it to you they, if they don't have that we've lost we've right. lost a lot there it's You're kind right of sad i did have a, a question that came in from bruno he said is there a way to send these out of the country so um and i don't know bruno if you need to have them translated or not but um, does it really matter if you have an email address? Can it go outside of the U.S.? Well, yes, it does, but none of, none of the content is going to be relevant for you know Dublin or London um, or anywhere else. Uh, our widgets are hyper local; they work everywhere in the you know United States. Um, so an agent could an agent could strip use our cell use our platform, take all of our content out and just add something they want to. That's fine, uh, but we don't we don't excel at international content. Um, you know, and the email addresses, yes, you can send emails around the world, they'll still get through, but the content philosophy is just not gonna work there. So you could maybe do things like home values or market, like how's how's the Houston market doing or something like that, right? But right. Not we're, we're always, you know, getting requests from somebody in Canada that wants to take this concept nationwide in Canada, and we just, we haven't had a lot of time yet because we're building some new functionality. Um, remember the uh, email scoring I was telling you about on yesterday's call? Mm -hmm. um, so what we're doing on, on what we're focusing on next right now is this discovery engine. And okay. what we're doing is taking the email addresses that the agents have in the home actions database and every night scrubbing them against 1100 different databases, social sites, government sites, um, everything that's out there. And what we're doing is we're coming back to the agent and we're saying, Here's all your email addresses. Here's where the email addresses have been used, indicating once the artificial intelligence kicks in, indicating that if somebody is somebody's uh, email address was found on this site, that site, that site, add them all up, merge them all together, do some machine learning. We're going to tell you that somebody is uh, either at 18 or a 97 on a value range. And 18 is pretty low, not engaged, probably not researching. Somebody that's a 97. There's somebody you want to talk to closely because something's going on in their life and the solution is usually buying or selling a home. So we're going to tell you the propensity of the people in your database to get into a transaction three or six months down the road. So these email addresses are more important than phone numbers these days, okay? Everybody's signing into services and they're on social sites and they're using their email addresses and our systems pick up on all the usage of those email systems and we burned it into a score. And we're telling you somebody that's 80 and above is engaged, they're researching, you gotta stay closely in contact with them. You'll be able to send uh, specific content out of home actions, knowing that they're a 96 versus an 18. And this is what they could call artificial intelligence. We're taking all this data that you could never you know, play with on a spreadsheet, throw it into the artificial engine and it's gonna come out and it's gonna score all these people. Now, we're not going to tell the agent where the email addresses were found. We're just going to score their email addresses, okay? But if somebody recently bought diamonds, if somebody has a dumpster in their driveway, we have knowledge of people who have dumpsters in their driveway today. So what does that tell you? They're even fixing up to sell or fixing up to stay, one or the other. So any of those predicaments uh, where email addresses are found, we're going to come back every day and score them and show the agent you got to, why you got to stay closer to these people because we think they're buying and selling and you know integrating or uh, getting engaged in researching right now ready for a sale in the next three to six months and we have confidence factors you know we can explain this more to you in the Q&A so okay. what happens is when they open up their home actions dashboard sure they can see who got the newsletters and who clicked on that predictive content 
but then they have this 360 scoring and these are all their clients, prospects, and friends in the red here. And you can see their scores on the right. They're all above 81. So these are eight or 10 people that this agent wants to talk to right now because there's something going on in their life indicating that the, the residual might be, I'm buying or selling a home. I got to get out of this house. I'm downsizing, whatever it is. We're going to know that score. And you have to trust the science here. And again, we all knew from the first slide, it's a numbers game. We're going to help you with as many numbers as we can involved in real estate, involved in lead sharing here. So the sharing and then the scoring. So the idea is over on the right-hand side, we're going to do it every day because somebody's doing something with their email addresses every day. Mm -hmm. And we're going to synopsize that for the agent. That, and that's I don't know really if good, much, so I think we'll have some questions. I'm sorry? Yeah, if I only have an hour a day to do prospecting, I want to go after the 90s. I don't want to go after the 18s, right? That's why I blocked all these email addresses on this, Marilyn, so somebody wouldn't be writing down. <laughs> right now, you know, Mrs. Jones is a 97. She's taking prenatal vitamins. And we picked up on that. Okay, you, you'd be amazed at the sort, at the places where people are using email addresses that are related to a research or related to buying and selling a home. And yeah, there's we, nobody in the industry, the real estate marketing industry, that has this service. And when you combine it with home actions, because you have to have home actions to get the lead scoring service, right? Because okay. home actions collects and scrubs and cleans your database. So when we bring in your scoring, we already have your database, right? So agents can choose a level of, you know, up to 250 contacts, 250 to five, five to a thousand. Um, and the pricing changes a little bit, you know, it gets better as we uh, score more contacts for you. This is really neat. Okay. This is, uh, this. we just launched this yesterday. Okay. That's how fresh oh, wow. this is. And it wow. uh, fits well inside of our our, uh, our philosophy of helping the agents with their numbers. That's what we do. Out, out the presses. I love it. I love that we're seeing this for the first time on RE Technology. Good job. Yeah. Um, are there any uh, questions on this one? Oh, uh, there was one not related to this specifically, but um, Sam asked, how do we know if, you know, if what percentage of our emails are going to spam? Is that in the um, analytics? Well, we, we're able to track all that. It's a, it's a small number because we're sending good email addresses to hopefully people that we know. So we don't have a problem with uh, the scam, with the uh, uh, spam reports because they get unsubscribed. They'll never get another newsletter again. So we have to manage all this, all these spam filters, right? We have to manage uh, the quality of the list. There's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes. It's not just jacking into a uh, spreadsheet with 500 names on it. There's a lot of stuff that goes on behind there to keep that spam factor down. So when the agent is looking at their dashboard, their member list, they'll be able to see how many active, how many unsubscribed, how many that this agent tried to put in that they couldn't get in because they're already in somebody else's um, database. Got right? it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, large offices where we have 25, 30 agents using our service, there's a lot of email addresses getting sucked up there, right? And of course, they're all exclusive. So whoever gets it first wins. That's what it comes down to. So we have lots of questions about pricing. Okay, let me uh, go to this one on the next slide. Um, there's a opportunity here for you to subscribe to Home Actions or home actions with the lead scoring. Again, you have to have home actions account if you're gonna do the lead scoring. Because okay. our database and our logic and the artificial intelligence, that's all built into there. So if you want to subscribe to the home actions program, we have about close to 5,000 agents all over the country now subscribing. There's a $99 setup fee, and that involves us building your brand new database, hand-holding graphics, working with a list, uh, bringing in your personal content, everything that's needed sort of as a you know behind the scenes guy that's helping me do everything. That's That all comes with a $99 setup fee and the monthly plan, the monthly fee is $70 for the first month and every month thereafter, okay? That is called our monthly plan. And we have a quarterly plan that's available. We can uh, certainly get you that information if you fill out our, um, uh, our text form or our email address. So that is what we call just the standalone home action system that so many thousands are using right now. When combining it, lead scoring with home actions, okay, this is when we'd start saving some money. There is no setup fee. That $99, we're waiving that on the combination package. 
scoring, the annual price for that scoring product goes from 480 to 360. So we're saving 120 there plus the 99, that's 120, $219 savings. So what we did was we lowered all the prices, we wrapped everything up into a plan that's $1,200 for the year, but we let you break it up in monthly payments. So there's a setup or a uh, monthly, or I'm sorry, a, um, a down payment of $245 and then 11 payments of $86. And okay. what you're going to be able to get for all this effort and this, and we understand, you know, spending money today on a marketing program, you, you've got to see the return on this. We're going to show you this multiple ways in your home actions dashboard, the opens, the clicks, the shares, the downloads, and now the scoring. So you're gonna to wanna to go into your home actions dashboard every day or so and see who's moving. You're literally gonna be able to walk down the office or down the street and your phone's gonna go ding. And that's Mrs. Jones that moved from a 53 to a 91. Something hmm. happened over the last week or two at Mrs. Jones. I don't know exactly what it is. I know that the solution is buying or selling a home. Okay, that's what we're getting at. So 11 payments of $86 with the down payment and your system could be up and running in a couple of days. We could be pushing your newsletters out. And then um, if you have, and that's for a 250 limit. Uh, if you have between 250 and 500, it's a little bit more per month. Um, it, but they, you know, the per per event, if you will, or per email goes down uh, as you get up for six, seven, 800 contacts. So again, there's nothing like this anywhere in the industry. And when you combine it with home actions, uh, you've got a one-two punch here that's going to put more money in your pocket. That we're going to guarantee you. This looks really awesome to me. So how, how if someone wants to order it now or if they want to uh, learn more about it and call you, how do they how do they reach I you? I think guys? we have an order form in the um in the uh, the chat room, don't we, Marilyn? We do, yeah. So if you if you click on the little bar in the control panel, uh, that little triangle, it says um to download the form, click here to download. So if you just grab that link there, you can download and that'll give you a form that they can fill out to send to you. Is that correct? Right. And uh, right now, if you want to get, get just get into home actions, you could literally text me and I'll call you back in a few minutes after this. That's Perfect. our email address. Okay. Somebody will contact you today. We, you know, we're in the stay in touch business. So we respond quite rapidly. Um, so my phone number's there. Um, we'll build custom solutions for you. We'll build custom graphics. We'll do everything it takes for you to build what we call relationship capital. And that's awesome. hard to do these days. We mentioned that three things you have to do, right? Prospect, nurture, and close. And that's what we're gonna, you know, hopefully help you with. Perfect. So if you, if there's someone's just listening, it's the era, the phone number is 570-510-3507. Or you can just uh, email Albert at sales at home actions with an S dot net and he'll he'll take care of you. Yeah, just make sure that actions has an S on it. We call it plural, homeactions.net. Exactly. And uh, if, you text, if you text to that number, we'll send you the order form. We'll get it going fast. You'll hear from somebody on our sales team this afternoon or early this evening. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Albert. I think this is a, a really good system. And, you know, we've been talking a lot on the coffee chats we do during the day and webinars about how right. it's so important to figure out a way to Get consistent in your marketing efforts and consistent in your sales efforts. And this is a really good foundation to do that on a regular basis. So really sure. appreciate you coming. Thank you so much for sharing and this. Marilyn, and I appreciate the, uh, appreciate the forum here. Thank you very much. Yeah, and I love that lead scoring thing. Thank you for introducing it. Well, we'll I'm sure we'll hear more about that as time goes you on. Sure will. Ho hopefully everybody will. Thank you, Marilyn. Yeah, and thanks everybody for attending today. Really appreciate it. Um, everyone have a great afternoon or evening, wherever you are. and. Um, if you'd like to join us tomorrow, we have another coffee chat tomorrow at nine o'clock and join us and we'll continue to learn about other great technologies. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great day. Okay, bye-bye.